Well, one of the places that we get food is at the Seventh-day Adventist Sanitarium Hospital, just down the way here. And that's tofu and vegetarian gluten, garbanzo beans, brown rice. And here's Rolf's little kitchen here. I put up some new shelves. Lucelle just arrived the other day. Come up and meet with me. I checked on Rolf here. So we're getting you some uh, special food from the Adventist Hospital. Okay. And this is uh, his little bungalow, I guess you want to call it. I built this little bamboo thing. He loves to sit out here. A little bamboo nipa. So I gave the U.S. Embassy this address so they have it. Um, they know where he's at. And the thing is, is I mean, I, I need to get back into the province and I've got things I have to do. And oh, I really can't, sp I'm 46 years old. I can't take my life and, you know, direct it towards Rolf and uh, his life. I mean, he doesn't have enough money to pay me. I don't know how, I mean, I really don't know what to do about this situation. Either he needs to, you know, be, we could adopt him as a grandpa. He could live with us. Uh, he could go to the south with us, something like that. But I, you know, I've tried to avoid uh, interaction with him because I'm just, uh, he's, he really wants to be in control of his life and I don't blame him. I think that's a great idea. My dad was the same way until he was 101. So, I mean, go Rolf, go, good job. I, I agree with that. You know, I, I don't know about you, Rosanna, what you think, but obviously he's, he's going to get to a point in his life where he needs some assistance. He's going to become the child and, you know, I don't know. Yes, I'm willing because he's been my friend for 30 some years. Of course, he's like family. Uh, I'm not going to abandon him. I just don't want to be at fault or, you know, put in like a, a taking advantage, you know, sort of category. Uh, that That's something that is very, very painful when you spend your life, and Rolf has done this. He and I and his, his wife, uh, Mary Lou, uh, joined kind of forces back in 1993 or four when they came to live with me and I was working with homeless and helping. I was in my early 20s. We were taking people off the streets and they believed in that kind of work. They called it medical missionary work, helping the poorest of the poor. This was their belief and my belief as well. We shared in it. So, you know, that's why Rolf, when he, when he first got here, he was going down the road over there. Um, you can't see it from here, but basically there's a lot of squatters and the Vice President Binai is moving those people out of the area, but he used to go, Rolf used to go underneath the bridge and climb around in there and get lice in his hair and, you know, what, what did he do with those people? He was talking with them. He had a genuine desire to, to help them. I, I don't know why he can't remember his grandkids and, you know, that's just like a part of his life that he can't conceive of. And uh, I know it probably hurts some of the family and maybe even the grandkids, I don't know. But he's been, his mind is set on something and he, it's like that's what he wants to do, medical missionary work. In his mind, it's colloidal silver and uh, the fuel vaporizer, helping families know how to save, you know, on gasoline costs and stuff like that. So he's been doing that, uh, making colloidal silver. There he is. Anything else you want to say to your grandchildren or your daughter in America? <laughs> say hello. Hello. You got some good food there. Is it good? I want to write a letter here. You want to write a letter? Yes. Okay. Right here. Oh. He wants to write a letter to you. You know, he is pretty good at writing, so I could help him do that. Uh, and he has written up some pretty amazing stuff. I put paper down before him, and he wrote some stuff that was really intelligent. He, and there's my mom and dad there. I put their, their uh, picture up, and uh, this is one of the helpers down there in the island. But this is a beautiful, beautiful place, and uh, he likes it there. You can see it's really clean and pristine. So... But, you know, I just thought that, you know, he should go where he wants to. And when he was here, he liked it here. So I said, well, 
I guess I can't force you to leave. You know, anyway. Do you, have you enjoyed Rolf at all? Yeah. He's a nice yeah. guy? Yes, and you know, he's so kind. He's kind? Yeah. <laughs> kind and ornery sometimes, but yes, he is a nice guy and yeah. I enjoy him, praying with him and spending time with him. So guys, that's it. Here's uh, his little kitchen. Oh, well, let me show you his bathroom. He has a little sitting area here and uh, bed. But uh, this is also the prayer room. And we have this little Bible verse up. And I'm going to show you his bathroom. He has a nice toilet, shower. He has an outdoor shower as well. And he has this sink, which he really loves because it's right at the foot of this area he likes to lay on. This is a special um, layer that is comfortable for him and also reflects his body heat. And you'd think, well, it's a hot country. Maybe that wouldn't be good. But actually, old people get cold, and he's adapted so much that he likes he likes the heat, and he likes to stay really warm. Uh, and it's good, you know, when you're having congestion. So uh, he talked about that, and I helped him put this together. And he has his closet right here, and he puts his denture stuff up here, and it's you know he has toilet paper there, uh, his fresh air, not really fresh, it's Manila, but you know he has a mirror, he has a mirror there. Uh, so it's very convenient for him. I was putting some new tile in for him here. I'm not done, but uh, you know, of course, none of us own this. He's just renting, and uh, I just think that he should have things nice, you know. And then when he leaves, it, it'll be nice for the next person that comes in. Okay, guys. God bless. We'll talk to you later. I'm going to upload this for you, Rosanna, and I hope you get it. And I'm tired. Being at the embassy all day was. Kind of tiring.